Welcome back to Cosmotea. My name is Neil Olsen. I will be your ship architect and commander today. And uh, let's see. Well, we last time, if you are following the series, we had some very painful learnings. It was not a big surprise. We knew it already that we, our front was just not weak enough to defend against some of the bigger ships that we are uh, the class we're in. So at the start of the previous episode, I was saying, do we want to add more weapons or do we want to add more protection and of course we added more weapons and of course that had an impact on uh, our survivability so in this case uh, today that's one of the very important learnings we will be scaling this up to be a massive ship and i think we'll reach what i can i think is going to be somewhat the final form of this ship we are constrained by the fact that we have a, a square here to work in so it can't get much bigger but we're going to be using the space that we have available unfortunately that means it's going to be very squarish but uh, I, I don't think that's a, that's a problem. So let's, let's, before we dive into the design work, let's talk a bit about the objectives of the design. And while I talk, you can hit the like button because I so appreciate all the likes and follows and good comments and also some kind of the, the weird comments, but uh, I do very much appreciate it. So thank you very much. Right, so what have we learned from this design? Well, first of all, and this is the thing is that the modular design that I, I'm doing is absolutely insanely good, like unreasonably good. And uh, anyone who says otherwise, I'm sorry, you are just wrong. It It is just, it is the way to do it. Make separate modules that you can move around. Also, when you redesign big ships, then you can actually just shuffle them around as we did here and make room for it. And if you add more, then you can add the same thing again. It is so good. Plus, the main part about it is the logistics that will just not run over the, all over the ship. They'll be contained to several to small areas, which is really good. Plus, if uh, if you get blown up, then it doesn't cascade. What happened last time was that we got in, taken in here. This one exploded, this one exploded, this one exploded, this one exploded. And then suddenly one mishap took out this entire section of the ship which is kind of a big and important section so have things with walls in between so if something goes wrong then a section goes out but the rest can continue uh, what uh, in terms of armaments well the front definitely needs more it needs more shields it more needs more armor it needs more point defense because point defense is incredibly uh, powerful against like let's say if if we're going to go with a shield-based defense, and we are, because, well, that's I think that's better, um, then we need to make sure that we can protect against the two things that are very, very hard on shields, EMP missiles, that's PD, uh, PDC cannons that will protect, and the other one is uh, is the disruptor shots, and they don't have very much range. So we need to be able to stay, without stay out of range, and we need to shoot down all missiles incoming. Nuke missiles are probably going to be another problem, so we'll need to layer the... The, the bubbles here a lot. So lots of point defense up front, having something that can be shot off without taking out the rest. We need more on the, on the deck cannons because, well, we'll have a wider surface, so we'll have more cannons, twice as many, everything doubles. Uh, these prism cannons, they're working okay, but you know, if they're working okay, that's not good enough for us. So we're gonna be doubling it. We'll be having 32 of these because this is a module. Hey, we can just copy another module in here and then everyone's gonna be happy. EMP uh, missile launch bay here is absolutely amazing. I love it and it works wonderful. The thrusters here are the engine clusters. We They are working fine. Uh, we do want to squeeze in yet another one. And I think we can squeeze in more because if we make the ship bulkier, then we also need to add more thrusts. So that means more thrust at the back as well. Uh, I like the fact that we have this middle part and then the thrusters and then the sort of the, the wings here outside. And I'm going to continue with that design. Let's see, what else is there? I think that that's gonna be sort of the main things we want to uh, to do with. So mainly defending the front. Oh yeah, we while we're redesigning and have more space, we're gonna be throwing in some tractor beams. And uh, in this episode, I will not be doing much in terms of tractor beams because I think that that deserves a separate episode with all the silly things you can do with tractor beams. beams and, uh, and, and therefore we'll add them, but we will not be using them in this episode because I think that there'll be there'll be too many systems to to check and control once we're done with the design work. Now uh, let's uh, let's look at the design uh, here. This is going to be the front. The front is the one that takes the is going to be the most change. So let's uh, go from here, and then uh, I'll explain the new design. 
And so after an extensive amount of farming, we are finally ready to uh, click the button here. And the funny thing is we actually get one refund and that is a one processor in refund. So somehow we use one processor less with the new system. Let's make it so. Whew. Well, that was, uh, that was costly. Well, we had all the items, so that's uh, pretty damn good. Now, um, what the hell did we just do? Well, the first thing we did was uh, we increased our crew from 304 to 448 and we have this massive ship so the first thing is this ship is not working like it's uh it it needs to get all of the resource allocations all of the crew allocations get all that done and i'd actually really like to show you that because for me this is the part where i really feel that i that the game is a logistics game and i think that this is where a lot of people can sort of struggle a bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run around and find the crew and then i'm going to allocate all the well actually i don't need to find the crew i can just allocate the crew uh, for for this area as uh, as i want because you can see nothing is really working here and we need to make sure that not only are things working so i will just try to do that and uh, maybe we can do it as a as a time lapse or something because it's kind of repetitive but it's also kind of instructive as well as much as I think I'd like to do a time lapse, I just don't think it makes sense to be honest because I need to explain what's going on in each of these segments and uh, working through each segment together with uh, setting it up is actually what makes sense. So let's start with the front segment because that's the one that has uh, undertaken the most change. What you can see here is that I now have a front part that's only dedicated to shields and point defense drones. This is a fully contained area. It has double uh, blocks here. And then the next one is uh, basically our gun deck, then you have our deck cannons here with ammo, uh, ammo production and uh, sulfur storage. When we get there, we have our tractor beams and then a big reactor to uh, to fuel all of this area. This, I think it might also be a bit much, but I think this uh, really is here. The reason why we like the big reactors is first of all, we have the money, so why not? The second one is the fact that it's, um, it's helping us with, uh, with carrying three at a time. You see, they carry three. Funny how they just rather want to go out that way. That's actually interesting. I'll do that. Maybe they'll like that more. Huh, interesting. Never mind. Um, so what's uh, what we can do in terms of resource allocation? Uh, you can see here that I have specific allocations up here. This will only serve here uh, because I believe that during combat these will be firing a lot and if I need to get the ones that are both running around here back and forth also to feed these in here then it's not going to be too much and there will be too much latency between them running out and an issued command and then running up here. So I'm going to have two allocated to just feeding this. I'm not going to do it for this one because I have so many nearby anyway so that should be okay. Uh, for this I will be allocating uh, all of these two there 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 that's and no no remember that not do that there we go like that um they will be feeding this they'll be feeding the, the servicing this they'll be also going here um and that's basically going to be all of them right i don't need to have more going to that area to be honest and that one's done. That one is also here. And this one. There. And if we look at resource allocation, then we'll be from this one, we'll feed into all of these. Everything that needs power will be fed from here, except the last one will be fed from the capacitor. And that should be good. Let's look at the next part. Start with the crew allocations. Crew allocations, what I'm going to do here in terms of crew allocations is they, I'll have six plus two. So they will be here and here, but I only need four in here. So the rest will be allocated to feeding these two. That means I will have eight crew. Four of them will always be sitting here and the other four will be working on this part. Great. And that's going to be what we do for all of them. And it's kind of awkward that they are sort of split on that uh, side by side like this but that's just how it is there and then we have uh, the other crew because we have some crew here this is logistics crew they'll be feeding this and this and what else isn't there a warper here uh yes that one it doesn't need to be it, it's so rare that they need to go up here that it doesn't matter that it's really uh, inefficient then we have this crew we're gonna need four in here and there there they are. 
Let's look at resource allocation. Resource allocation is pretty straightforward. Well, it isn't it, but the sulfur goes in, the ammo goes into the storage and also directly into the deck cannon. The storages can go into the deck cannons and that's gonna be it. Uh, that should be, uh, hold on. We obviously need to check the power. There, so power is now also distributed. Now, for a lot of the other ones, the power here is pretty simple. The resource allocation is pretty simple. There, and you also need to take that. This two will go into that location, two will go into that location, and everyone should be happy. Funny how they... Oh, right, they just swap places, that's why. Here we have our new bridge that is uh, just having dedicated resources. So, I don't know, it kind of seems silly to do this, but hey, consistency is king. That's going to be what we do. They are just locked up. They are just going to be doing bridge stuff and nothing else. Uh, on the side here, do we have anything? To... Yeah, we do have something that needs to be done. They will be going into here, here, and here. Um, these will go into that room, and that's going to be all the resource allocation. What about the... This location, that's also fine. And let's see other new segments. Any of the existing segments, I have not really, uh, they, they are already existing. So here we have some logistics. I only assigned four logistics for this area. <clears throat> this wing area is not particularly interesting because it's just storage. And this is where I store my steel. It will also be a potential where I store some extra crew, which I have an idea for extra crew. And I also, uh, could change it into uh, factories eventually. So let's say you're going in here and here. Anything else you want to do? Um, yeah, you kind of also need to do these because I don't want to have dedicated crews to those. And there. So that's a lot of assignments for this, but they are not very busy assignments, these ones. There. That should be good. And the reason why I don't assign anything here is because I don't need to, because they will be handled because as long as you have a crew assigned to a reactor, then anything the reactor serves is also going to be be supplied. Um, but that means I need to assign it here because then it supplies the next part. That's just kind of how it works. Let's scroll through to see. Uh, yeah, here we do have, again, some small things. And this one, these two, and these two. Here I have six crew servicing it, and I think that's going to be the right number, obviously, I think. Um, you're gonna go in there, you're gonna go in there, you'll go in here. Um, yeah. All of that is done. This part here is also refurbished. The Here, I used to have 10 segments for each reactor because each reactor could support it, but the crew could not support it. So now I have eight for one uh, for one for two crew and that should load them a bit faster we are also adding it so that now the uh, the range here is we'll go to the build mode here it is 304 so it's the maximum length 30 segments and uh, that should uh, give it a little more punch because it did it need the more punch uh, down here we are going to look at crew assignment i have just very straightforward crew assignments there these will just go um you'll be servicing this 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 and this that should be good and we'll sort of mirror it uh, on the other side there 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 and there and these don't need to be serviced yeah so i have eight crew for this part i think that's going to be good let's look at resource allocation that looks fine great if we look at this one yeah it's servicing all that it needs and we are now all the way around we have our engines here in the middle and then the big part about our our system here this part is now going out and because it's a module i just copy pasted it down here it goes out through the middle here and let me see if i have remembered to set them up yes i have they're all pointing forward so this was what i had previously with 88 going into one and now i just added another eight going in here and going forward and this one will then be uh, yeah uh, consolidated 16 iron prisms on either side and they'll be just set to fire at will so they'll be sort of my proximity basically the way it works is i will be at maximum range with my uh, rail cannons anything that gets closer will be hit by these iron prisms at 300 range then anything that gets closer than that will get the loving embrace of our 
our eight deck cannons and any uh, incoming will be taken out by the shields. They are overlapping so that this is protected. These are protected by triple shields, triple, triple, triple shields. This one only double shield, uh, but it's also like the more the outer one. But the core part here is protected by triple shields. Uh, this is a smaller shield that's down here, but it's still protected very, very well uh, comparatively to what it was before. This is not because there's no crew, but I think we'll, we'll need to solve that. Uh, if we look at our warp here, it also is pretty good, but it has, does have one very big limitation is that the warpers, they have to go out and into the airlock and go in here. I don't care. <laughs> it's very simple. I just don't care. It's uh, I'm, I'm not going to be combat warping, so that's uh, that shouldn't be a problem. What we need to do now is find more crew. So we need to hire a lot more crew because we need to get... Oh, we have a few things here. We need to get all the crew we can. 352 crew. We should be able to have enough based on the fame. It's simply a matter of not having enough due to uh, just simply the supply of resources here. You can see this goes up to 220. So I think we can, uh, we can, we should be able to get all the way up here or at least very close to that. Uh, that means I need to sort of fly around and uh, find, find more crew for us. Uh, we are in a zone right now that is uh, 11 to 13 and we'd like to go into the 13 to 15 once we sort of learn the ship uh, how uh, how that performs uh, we will for this uh, episode uh, for the testing we will do some testing obviously i will be disabling my tractor beams because that's something that is yeah it's just a little bit more complicated um and therefore we are going to make sure that they are off for the time being we'll be using all the other things uh, but first we are going to need to get some more resources and now i kind of regret something don't i well um because this ship can barely fly yeah uh, but it doesn't have enough crew to actually f do anything except limp limp away uh, luckily i think we have enough in our nope the real cannon is not uh, not sufficient and that's probably because these don't have anything Okay, well, I'm going to find out the way to get more crew without getting into too many fights. Oh, look at that. They just replenished more crew. Uh, it's still a long way off, but uh, it's a start. So let me find the crew somehow, uh, traveling around other segments and uh, trying to f to get those uh, get the crews going. So we are now in the new system and uh, we have all of the crew. I had to go in here to get the stuff going and I also just took out uh, or got some more stuff on board. Uh, so we have replenished our stock and uh, that should be good now we are ready to take it for a spin and uh, try out our new systems in uh, in this uh, this sector and let's see so these are turned off as they should be and yeah i think we're ready to go we have lots of money we have lots of stuff we have lots of things out here that we want to uh, to explore we've just been coming from this location flying in here and uh, let's let's go in now the first thing we want to see is how fast slash slow is it and that means we need a bit of space to, to build up let's have a look at up here and once it is in a straight straight line that's what we want to see and it should be this is looking pretty good 77.8 is where it's at and there are also a lot of thrusters so that's uh, pretty damn good for for such a massive ship that we can get up to 77.9 i must be uh, having some uh, some headwind or tailwind or running downhill. I think we're running downhill. So we're going to go in here and the first combats we'll do with our rail cannons. Once we feel a bit more comfortable, then we will be trying without rail cannons just to see how the other systems perform. Uh, because that's kind of, I, th I think, I think we want to see how, how it works. We don't want to get into really, really trouble, but oh, that's not good if that's coming in pirate hunter as well. But this is two ships and this sector is now 13 to 15. So that is a, uh, that's some big ships here. And they're coming in at exactly the same time. So that's two level 10 ships. Uh, let's have a look at what they have that is gonna be, oh, this is a rail cannon ship, but it only has one stuff here. Yeah, everything else is on, uh, on auto fire. This one has nukes. I don't like the fact that it has nukes. Um, is that more dangerous then? I think it is. It also has like a really weird setup here, but it's it's super cool. Uh, I think I'd like to take you out and then you. Actually, I just go straight into that one because that is not as well protected as you think it is. Uh, let's do this. And then 
immediately back up. I'm just hitting the brakes here, basically firing all 32 reverse thrusters to maintain the distance. Let's do that. And we cut it in half and our EMPs are also coming in. This one did not even get a range and I'm going to be shooting that one because I do not want this one to join us. And we keep firing. Now we rotate the other way and we'll be shooting at the same time. So that's going to be... Okay, they, they didn't shoot at the same time. They were too slow. Okay, so so far our rail cannon seems to be working quite okay. I'm going to mark these two on the maps because that is fat loot for us. There we go. Not that we really need the loot, but... Uh, it's uh, it, it's it's nice to have. Uh, when we have stuff in here, okay, let's look at maneuverability. Oh, this is the biggest problem I think. That's uh, with this giant boxy ship is that it's gonna pick up everything along the way. Let's make sure that we do not get uh, get to fight two. Oh, this one is actually on an attack vector. They're both on attack vector. Oh, look at that. They're actually combat here. Uh, not anymore. Bent sword. Well, that's really that's uh, that's just loot for us now. Oh, the level 15 guardian, which is a friend, uh, is actually pretty good. Let's actually see what you're you're actually on a attack vector over here. Okay, that is a Rufus Rufusant. I don't know what that is, but it is not a good ship. Oh, it has one, two. Oh, it it has a few nukes, so we really want to stay away. Eight nukes. Um. Which, what's, what's, uh, what's the front and back of this? Huh. Uh. Seems like we could make it break in the part, but does it have a control room on this side? Nope, it doesn't. It only has one control room. So I think it's actually the control room we want to take. And we definitely want to stay away. EMPs are away. That's good. And they are shooting. Let's slow down a bit. Let's see if those nukes are going to fire. Are we not shooting? Oh, there we are. There we go. Okay, so nukes did not fire. That's, there's a nuke. Well, better them than me. That's fine. It took a bit of a, a scratch. All right. Let's uh, loot up and uh, proceed to the next spot. Well, I don't think we ever get to loot here in this sector. <laughs> I'll try. Oh, I'll definitely not try. I will definitely not try. Uh, this one is coming in really on hot pursuit. We'll be going up. Okay. Ooh, don't fight at eight speed. There we go. And, oh, that was the, that was just a gold, the gold asteroid. Okay, that's another one of these. Okay, this time we get to fight the nukes. And we really want to stay out of range of the nukes. They have 300 range and they're backwards firing. I think that's good to have that. And yeah. Okay, so we definitely want to stay away. And then hit the reverse thrusters. Oh, did I? I did. Oh, I did took it, take out that part. Okay, so now it's just really vulnerable. Oh, it's fleeing. Okay, we have to dig our way through all of that. There we go. Right. So, these kind of things, with things with nukes, we definitely want to maintain our distance. That is absolutely without a doubt. We'll be uh, looting up and then going into some next one. And then at that point, we will also be trying to... Uh, that's not a control G. Uh, we'll also be trying to see how our, our ship works without the rail cannons. Because it's nice to have and it's also nice to... I don't want to get into the position where I get overwhelmed I, immediately. But I want to make sure that we test our backup system. Because ultimately they are anything except... Uh, except aside from the rail cannons are just backups at this point. Or if, if we face multiple. Also we have uh, put in some... The mining lasers on the side so that we can mine on two sides at this point. Eh, I think that's nice. So I have an idea that if uh, if for whatever reason maybe I warp and forget a few crew, maybe a segment gets shut off, then I'm really vulnerable to losing crew. So what I think I could do was actually make a bit of a, a spare crew compartment. 
And we could do that by going here and then making some spare crew compartments here, here, and here, for example. That is going to give us like that. That's a lot. That is uh, 1836 plus 36 on the other side. There. Just hope they don't get shot off. And they will then mark all of these as nothing. And then I hope that they don't get assigned here by uh, by by default, right? But that means uh, if if we have some extra crew, for example, we now need we know we need 40, 148. Um, but if we then uh, lose some, we can go in here and we can just uh, get some spare. That means we now have five spare crew. They will be locked up. I guess we can call this the brig. They'll be locked up in the brig, and uh, only if uh, in dire circumstances will they get promoted from being in the brig to being actual crew members. I think that is a very reasonable thing. So go in there and stay in the brig. Doors locked. Don't go out. They'll just be in here. Cool. I think that's a, a reasonable idea for, for managing sort of extra crew. Now, at this point, we want to go out and take something else. Uh, in this region, we have... That's a pirate base. I don't want to take a pirate base right now. We'll take a, a fugitive bounty out here and we'll be disabling our uh, our rail cannons for this part. There we go. No rail cannon. Unless, of course, we get into trouble. But we just want to see how it works without re uh, relying on rail cannons. Uh, that should be a bit of a a bit more of a challenge and then a bit more uh, maneuvering on all of this. It's just firing so well. Okay, but we'd like to know what this is. And we have one single ship, so these fights will most likely take a lot longer than uh, previously because it won't just be shot. And that one will be a carbon in case we want some diamonds at some point. We are going to approach. So this ship, I hope it's not doesn't have nukes, but even if it has nukes, we're going to have to try, try and see how, that, uh, how we perform against the nukes. All right, here we are. Let's see what kind of ship it is. And all of our systems are on autobot. It is the nuke ship. Why is it a nuke ship? Ah, that, I hate it. All right. I don't think that's a good idea. All right. We're probably going to lose a lot. So what is the impact of facing a ship with eight nukes without uh, in, in close combat? Uh, that's going to be a test for our shields. And it's going to be a test for basically everything else. Now we have this range is our attack range is the rail cannon range. And this is the EMP range. This is the tractor beam range. This is... I wonder what that is. That's probably 300, so that's... I don't know what... Uh, this range is our auto, our deck cannon range. This one, what is a bit more than that? And the inner one is our mining laser range. Hmm. This range I'm a bit uncertain about. This is this is a missile range, and that's also fortunately also their missile range. Now this is the this is the EMP missile range. This is I think this is the huh, that's weird. I guess I don't know what that is. I I know it would be the tractor beams, but there are one, two, three, four ranges, and I don't think that, that makes sense for us. Oh well, uh, I guess we need to get to this range. That's nuke range. We can take some of this out. That would be nice. And that is uh, the normal missiles coming in. And we are just munching on the forward part. Let's see. All of them are working. Yep. It looks so good. The fact that they go out through the hull. And then dig their way in. Unfortunately, this is where it's the strongest. And we're really paying attention to these nukes here. Because we don't want to be closer. We, I wish we could turn on our... If we could, we would... Oh, right, of course. This is the... The 300 range is that one. So, I really want to get to... Stay at this range. Thank you. So, we can just take out whatever it is. I don't think any of these are going to be dangerous. Any of the normal missiles. They'll be shut down before they get close. Let's zoom down the speed here. Uh, what we need to make sure of is that they don't get within range of... Uh, of uh, firing nukes before we sort of dig our way through here. We did. Oh, we did. We could took out the... Yes. Brilliant. We took out the command bridge. Ooh, and they never fired the nukes. That's kind of stupid of them. 
Okay. We fought a nuke ship that didn't fire nukes. So I'd call it a success. We managed to maintain distance. But don't look like you maintain distance. And the nukes, since they were at the back of the ship, they were never really getting close. And it was just poorly designed by having the bridge up front. I guess. Cool. Let's uh, find something else to uh, to chase down. All right. Here we have the next area that we are coming in. So there's a single ship. Let's see what kind of ship we have here. And let's try and see how it works without using relying on our rail cannons. Unless, of course, it just become something like that overwhelmingly dangerous there what do we have we have a very much a bruiser type deck cannons uh flag cannons and missiles emp missiles so their objective is they want to shoot the emp missiles uh take out our shields and then smash through it we definitely want to maintain the distance on this one for sure but we also want to get closer to actually start shooting we're definitely going to be shooting at hmm are we Can we just start sort of, since this one is more of a digging our way through all of this, then yeah, let's do this and then go back here. We're going to kill that, that one anyway. And let's see range wise like that. And then we'll be ready to boost as we get closer. We're boosting now so that they can break. We do not want to get closer. Break. Break, 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 break. And if our if we're lucky, yeah, they're good. Uh, we wanted their our missiles to hit their here, there. There we go. And that should shut down the entire thing. That means at this point they can't get closer to us. We should be able to maintain distance. Maintain distance. It's not maintaining distance. I don't understand why we're not maintaining distance. Uh it's the oh, we are not getting enough power here. Yeah, that's kind of uh, understandable. We just simply cannot get enough power into these when we're boosting to start to uh, keep a distance. Uh, but we are shooting down pretty much everything here. I don't like the fact that we can't get closer. Or we can't maintain distance against uh, something like this. It's really weird. Well, this is why we need uh, tractor beams. I need boost away! I don't want to be up close like this. I don't understand why we're not getting any backwards momentum. Because they don't have any thrusters. There we go, finally. Um, they are just free firing now. Weird. There. Okay, we're still getting our cannon shots coming in here. It's just way too close. I don't get why it's so close. It's just this little teeny tiny thruster against all of our thrusters. We're just not maintaining any distance. And even our mining laser is coming on board here. Yeah, this could take a while for like that. There we go. Okay, well, I would not call that a success. Um, we definitely need for stuff like for fights like this. Ugh. We definitely need. Uh, need either the rail the tractor beams or the rail cannons to push them away or to engage them before they get here right now we're just basically yeah basically just acting as a bruiser which isn't really our our style did we lose any crew uh, maybe damn no we don't we have uh, five extra crew here hey you there we go and then onwards to the next area. Let's go here. Okay, we got our engagement. Let's have a look at what kind of ship this is. It looks like it's a single ship, so it's probably a nasty one. And I really don't like the fact that I'm hamstringing myself so much with no rail cannons and only the... But let's, let's have a look at it. Okay, what is this monstrosity? It's a level 13 ship. Hmm. That seems... A little bit vulnerable to EMPs coming down the middle. Unfortunately, our ion prisms are not in the middle, but they are here. Damn, this is just real gun bait. Oh my god, this is real gun bait. Because I won't be able to shoot this properly, but it is so obvious that we just need to take these things out. 
Well, let's uh, let's give it a shot and try to get into this range. Although that will also be your firing range. Let's try it. And then boost to back up. Yeah, so... Our missiles hit on the outside, which is not really doing anything. And they are shooting at a side corner. That's fine if you want to shoot there. We could potentially just rotate a bit. Um, just like that. To get it on another shield. And then rotate the other way. While the shield recovers. Come on! Hey, can we even shoot through the shield? No, we can't even shoot through the shield. Because we can't get in through all of this. And we rotate again. And we don't want them to take stuff out. And... Okay, you know what? It looks like that is... Maybe that's uh, just time for us to go in up close and personal. Like that. And go with the Bruce attitude. Because that's kind of... Damn those shields. There we go. Alright, we took a, beat, a bit of a beating. But that was uh, the right strategy for this kind of ship. Yeah, a few scratches here and there. I'm sure that we'll uh, recover that from uh, from this ship. Again, this would be excellent to just spin around, but of course this is very much a rail, rail gun bait. What about crew? Did we lose any? Nope, no crew lost. Uh, nope, none at all. And we replenished our resources. Yeah, we can't even uh, take more, so that was uh, pretty good. And heading into the pirate base here. This is going to be really tricky because we definitely don't want to take all of it at once. So we do need to find a way to engage it without getting all of them at once. So it's either, I think it's going to be from the side. What we hope is that with their radars, they will see us coming and decide that this is, this one looks very much like it's engaging. That is perfect. And what do we got here? That is a silly, silly ship. Thank you very much for being a silly ship. A mercy giver, I will not have mercy on you. I am sorry. That is just not smart move. That's taking out one bridge. And this is just so vulnerable. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Did it cut through? There we go. It's dead. Next. This one definitely needs to keep a distance. We're still going to be going for the bridge. And we're going to be maintaining our distance for this. I'll be marking this. And I'm sure that we'll get... They'll get get us get close enough for us uh, for us to engage with the other weapons as well. Yeah, that took a really good punch through here. Give you another. Once we start digging through it, there we go, done. And we take out the EMPs. Yes. Get you, the auditor out, and the other one decided that uh, discretion was the better part of valor in terms of engaging with us out here in, uh, and hopefully it'll just pull back. Okay, it's coming. And we'll get to scroll down. And what do we have here? That is, ooh, okay. Uh, we are gonna shoot their rail cannon for sure. And we want to maintain a distance because I'd really like to have my shots hit out the first first part here. Okay, we got that one out. All right, turn. Yes, we got it. Front taken out. And is there really anything more to concern ourselves with? I mean, we could spin it; it would be nice. But I don't think there isn't. 
I mean, it doesn't have any weapons at this point. It, it does have some, some missile launches, but that's really not a problem, is it? They should be taken out very easily as they come in. Come on. Ah, took it. Okay. That is weird that it decides that that's a good distance. So let's just close the distance and kill it. There we go. All right. So we only have the remaining, the static defenses remaining. They are usually not a problem for us. So let's see. We can come back and loot this. Uh, didn't take any damage. It's been primarily the real cannon doing the work here. Again. Yeah, these are kind of silly. Like, couldn't they have, like, better iterations of this? There. These spaces could also be better. Uh, you're just spinning. Oh, right. You're just... Is there anything that we... No, there's not really anything we can... We can do about this, like... Funny how it's just... It's just a little bit out of range. I think. There. And then we just... We cut that one immediately. We'll cut the other one. There. No, not really. Not yet. There we go. Oh, it's also at 2x speed. Never mind. And get to the other one. Yeah, these bases are not the dangerous one. It's all the stuff that's around that's uh, going to be have any, uh, any concern to us. <clears throat> yeah, maybe don't shoot EMP cannons on this little thing. And that is gone. Right, so conclusions. Well, Rail Cannon is still reign supreme. And when we get into close combat, I can also just say that we absolutely need the tractor beams because the tractor beams will make sure that we can keep them at a distance where our prisms can fire. We might actually have to start looking at additional crew. First of all, at this point, since I'm using 448 crew for the ship, then I just I didn't want to add factories as well and other things. So we want to get like a, a base crew. And then once we have that and we can see that we can actually recruit up to maybe 500 crew, then we'll definitely be looking at places that need a bit more crew. Maybe maybe this is an option here. Like we are, we are just not... When they're boosting, they just run out very, very quickly. And is that because we don't have enough uh, crew for us? I don't know. Maybe it is. In any case, I'm really happy about the ship as as a sort of as a whole. Uh, I definitely think that the tractor beams will do a massive amount of, uh, of of change on this. Oh, let's start eating this. Nom 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 nom. And let's get it down here. Yeah, it is not exactly a nimble ship, but it was never intended to be. It is a capital ship. So uh, it's pushing space bases around. So I, I really like it. And I, we definitely have a few more things that we want to go. Because uh, obviously we also want to make sure that we can go into sort of the more dangerous zones. That is definitely an, our option. Uh, we're still running at 13 to 15. Like I would say that they, are, they would not be a problem if we also had the tractor beams. But that's easy for me to say. That's going to be something that uh, only time will tell. We'll be cleaning out this area and doing some quests here. Just getting as much reputation as we can before moving into the next. And then going into the really the core of this uh, this area that should be fun thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoy this uh, series and uh, even though we are sort of approaching the end of it because well what else can we come up with but uh, if you have good ideas for what we can come up with maybe like supporting ships who knows once we've we've finished uh, designing this uh, then let me know in the comment section below and uh, until next time take care and as always stay effective